We have the Berea sandstone fracture sample from the Digital Rocks portal, and in this video we're going to look at a few tools associated with image segmentation. We're going to look at tools for ROIs, or regions of interest, and tools for shapes, namely the cylinder tool. And we're also going to look at how you would compute a thickness mesh. We're going to start by going to the segment tab. The segment tab has three panels, the ROI painter, the ROI tools, and the segment with classifier. ROI tools is where you can create regions of interest, which are the tools you use for labeling pixels. So we could, for example, create a region of interest, and we could call it air. So I create a region, I give it a name, I give it a color, uh, I'm going to give it a uh, bright green color, and then you give it a geometry. That's the canvas that you're painting on, that is, your pixels that you paint have to match up with some other data set in your workspace, and so that's what the geometry here means. If you're only working on one image, then there's only one geometry to choose from. But if you have overlapping images or images of different size or different resolution, then you'll want to choose the appropriate geometry. So I've given it the name air and I've given it a color, I'll click OK. Now what I can do is I can uh, paint on this image or I can threshold or I can do other things. Um, we see many tools on the ROI tools panel. If I click define range, then I have the ability to, uh, it will default to not showing the histogram. I have the ability to drag these sliders and it might help if you do enable show histogram. So I want to select all of the air pixels in my data set. So I'll double click here and uh, to enlarge. And so I want to select the air pixels because I'd like to extract out the fracture. Now I'm also going to see some air pixels inside the pores, inside the porous sandstone, but that's okay for now. So let's suppose I threshold on something like this. And at this point I go ahead and click Add. It's going to add this entire range of pixels, which is currently red. It's going to add it to the air ROI. Let's make it a little more conservative. Now we'll click Add. I'm going to turn off Define Range, and now you see all of these pixels are labeled green. Now in this case we have a number of pixels that are outside this particular core liner, and our core sample happens to be cylindrical, so we can take advantage of that geometry and actually use a cylinder to mask our region of interest. So back on the main page, on the main tab, you'll find a panel called Shapes and it allows you to create a number of shapes. I'm going to create the cylinder shape by clicking on that blue button. Now in my workspace over here, if you don't see the shape, just click All. So we've got an image channel, a region of interest, and we have a shape which is a cylinder. I'm going to turn on the visibility for my shape, and you see this uh, uh, purple cylinder here. Now it's not lined up with my sample, but you can rotate or uh, change the height or change the diameter of your cylinders quite easily. In this case I'm going to grab the box right here and drag it to the top middle of the image and grab this one and drag it to the bottom middle of the image and now I have it aligned with my sample. If I double click here I can change the diameter uh, by just dragging on the edge. You can also grab in the middle and uh, drag to reposition that vertex of the cylinder. So we can uh, do something like this to apply a mask. Now at this point we've just created a cylinder. We can use it for visual clipping if we like. So for example if I come over on the cylinder and I say I would like to clip the air ROI. Um, when cylinder is selected I can check the air checkbox and tell it I want to do clipping and I want to clip outside the cylinder. Now you can see exactly what's uh, clipped by the cylinder. So I can drag this diameter in a little bit in the 2D panel uh, or in the 3D panel. Uh, likewise, you can tell the cylinder that you also want to uh, clip the image channel as well. So we can adjust the radius, we can also adjust the height of the cylinder here. So we can adjust it uh, till we're satisfied that we've uh, excluded uh, the core liner and maybe some of these air pixels that are not actually part of part of the fracture. So we have our cylinder and what I can do is I can right click on the cylinder and say I'd like to use this cylinder to mask an ROI. So when I choose mask ROI it asks which ROI which to mask and I choose air. Now everything outside the cylinder is removed and so I'll turn off the cylinder. So you see now that we have an ROI of air and it includes uh, 
all of the pixels inside the fracture plus some of the larger pores that were identified by thresholding, but it now excludes everything outside the cylinder. Now from here, if I wish to uh, extract out just the largest block of contiguous pixels, which would make up the fracture, and exclude all of these small islands, one thing I can do is I can right click on air and I can go to uh, refine region of interest process islands. Now here I could click uh, remove and say remove every cluster that's smaller than 100 pixels for example. Um, it, that's one option. Uh, another option is it, instead of remove you can isolate and then if I selected 100 pixels it would return everything that's greater than 100 pixels or sorry it would, it would do the opposite. It would keep everything that's 100 pixels and smaller. Um, if I want to get the largest object, then what I can do is isolate the one biggest object or the two biggest objects. So in this case, I'll just choose isolate uh, in first biggest, and I'll say I just want the biggest object. If there were two fractures in here, I might choose two, but I'll just click one. And now it's removed uh, everything except the largest object, uh, which is the fracture. And so as you scroll through, you can see what the fracture looks like in 3D. So what we've done here is we've created an ROI based on thresholding, and then we masked it with a cylinder, and then we cleaned up with a process islands operation. So we have a pretty good segmentation of the fracture. Uh, the last operation we'll do in this demo is create a thickness mesh. So if I select the air ROI, and I go back to the segment tab, you will find on ROI tools an option near the bottom to create a mesh or to create a thickness mesh. I'm going to tell it I want to create a thickness mesh with some smoothing and click OK. That's going to take the ROI and it's going to create a new object in our workspace which is a mesh. Alright, the mesh is computed. I'm going to minimize ROI tools. Over here I'm going to turn off the visibility of the air ROI and turn on the visibility of the thickness mesh. You can see the contour of the mesh and you can see it in 3D here. If I turn off the visibility of my image channel, then we see the thickness mesh in 3D. I'm going to double click. So here we have the thickness mesh. So it allows us to see uh, where the fracture aperture is greatest or smallest. Right now it's colored uh, with this lookup table, uh, but if I right click, uh, sorry, if I single click with the left mouse, I can choose another lookup table. So I could choose um, you know, a, a rainbow sort of lookup table if I'm interested. So now the thickest areas are in red. So I'll also point out that if you wish to right click on this, you can pull up something called the measurement inspector, which is this panel. This mesh has thicknesses mapped on all the vertices. If you had some other mesh, you might have simulation measurements mapped on the vertices or other attributes. This mesh has only one attribute and that is thickness. And here we can control how thickness is plotted. If I'm creating a number of figures and I want everything to be on the same scale. That is, I want my scale bar, in this case it goes from 109 uh, to 1230 because those are the thicknesses on this fracture. But the next data set may go from 50 to 1500. So if you want to create a universal scale, uh, I can set that here. I can say I want it to go from 0 to, let's say, 1300. Now my scale bar is mapped from 0 to 1300. And then what I can do in here is I can choose to look at just a particular area of measurements. And what I mean is, suppose I'm only interested in the thick parts of my thickness mesh. I can say everything inside this window from here to here should be 100% opacity. And everything outside the window should be 0% uh, opacity. And now I'm looking at just the thickest parts of the mesh or just the thinnest parts of the mesh. So this allows you to interrogate a three-dimensional object uh, based on its, its attributes. So it makes it very easy. We'll see this measurement inspector uh, applied to other, other analyses later. So if you want to color your grains by volume or aspect ratio and then interactively adjust the on-screen transparency or uh, other factors, uh, you'll be able to see how you can do that with the measurement inspector. All right, so that's the end of this video, which gives you a, a brief introduction to a little bit on shapes, a little bit on uh, regions of interest, and then a little bit on the thickness mesh, all using that uh, Berea fracture sandstone sample, Berea sandstone fracture sample from Digital Rocks Portal. All right, uh, enjoy.